Hi everyone. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make some chocolate chip cookies. First, what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about the mixer here. And um, if you guys have a KitchenAid mixer, um, I want to go over how to properly put it on. Um, so the bowl attaches you'll see that there's a little groove on the back here and it attaches right back into the back of the mixer. These two hooks need to be placed over. You pop the bowl in and you, you lift the lever up. Before you push the lever up, you're gonna attach your paddle attachment. You always want to use your paddle attachment when you are making cookies. The only time you would ever use a whisk attachment is if you're making something that you needed to incorporate air, um, like a meringue or egg whites and sugars of some sort that you would be mixing into a recipe. You're always going to be using your paddle attachment. And to put that on, you'll see also there's a little groove here. You go up and you just turn it and now it cannot come off. So that is how you are going to attach the, the paddle to your KitchenAid mixer. If you have a hand mixer, that's fine. You can use that to mix your cookies. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get my dry ingredients ready. So I'm gonna put this over here a little bit so you can see. I have my butter, my recipe sitting out here and I'll talk about my butter in a second, but I'm going to get my dry ingredients ready. So what I need is two and one fourth cup of flour. So I'm using some dry measuring cups, a one cup and a fourth here. And I'm going to mix all of my dry into one bowl. So I'm going to make sure that I'm measuring correctly because remember when you are baking, it is a science and you need to be precise even down to how you fill up your your flour in here. So I'm going to make sure that I'm leveling it off here. This really does make a difference. One cup. And you could use a butter knife or something to level it off. But I'm just using the back of the other measuring cup. So I know I need two and here's a fourth of a cup. And what else am I going to add is one teaspoon of baking soda. So this is my leavener here, my baking soda. Um, another leavener would be baking powder, but I'm using baking soda because that's what most cookies call for. So one teaspoon, I leveled it off, making sure that it wasn't overflowing. I know I need a teaspoon of salt. And, and then I'm just going to mix that up so that it's all incorporated together in here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna set that aside because that's gonna come in later. Next, I'm going to add my butter. So for your butter, Recipes for cookies call for softened butter. I've had my butter sitting out for maybe about an hour or so. Please do not microwave your butter if it says softened. That's where a lot of people make mistakes with cookies and how their cookies become flat. Um, if your butter is ice cold, then just cut it up into cubes or to, into chunks. See, mine's really soft right now, so I'm gonna throw it into my mixer. But if your butter is cold, that's okay. Just cut it up into littler cubes and just mix it with your sugar. Do not microwave it to soften it. Microwaves cook from the inside out, causing your butter to be too soft, which will make your cookies flat. So don't do that. Okay. Now to my pan, I'm gonna move my mixer over so you can see a little bit here better. I'm going to add my sugars. So for this recipe, it calls for brown sugar, 
and granulated white sugar. I personally like to use something called sugar in the raw or raw sugar. Um, you can also just use regular old cane sugar as well, but I like to have a little bit more consistency to my sugar, so this sugar is a little bit thicker. So to my mixing bowl, I'm going to add three fourths of a cup of regular sugar and brown sugar. So not many of you have a th three fourths measuring cup at home. So what you would use is you would use a one fourth cup three times. So I'm going to measure out my white sugar first right into my mixing bowl. So one, two, and three makes three fourths of a cup. And then I'm going to measure out my brown sugar right here. And what makes brown sugar brown is a little bit of molasses that they add to the brown sugar. With brown sugar, you need to pack the brown sugar very, very tightly into your cup, making sure that you level it off. And the way you know that it is packed is it, it makes an indent of whatever cup that you put it into. That's how you know you have the right amount of brown sugar. If I flipped over this brown sugar and it just crumbled all over the place, I know I didn't pack my brown sugar enough in the cup. So make sure that you're really packing it tight in there. So I know I need three fourths. So the same thing, I'm gonna do a fourth of a cup three times. And that's going right in with my softened butter. So now we are going to be doing the creaming method here. And I'm going to cream together my sugar and my butter. So I'm turning it on. You can turn it on to about medium speed here. It doesn't need to be super high where it's flying all over the place, but just a moderate speed. You don't want to over mix your cookies. So I'm just going to incorporate it until I see that the butter and sugar is pretty smooth together. The key to a great cookie is not over mixing. So I can see I have a little bit of butter that is stuck to the bottom here. So I'm just going to take my rubber spatula and kind of wipe down the sides a little bit, getting underneath that. So I know this only needs just a little bit more, so I'm going to turn it back on to about a medium speed and just mix it up. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my two eggs. I'm going to turn it on to the lowest speed and I'm gonna crack my eggs right into my pan, into my bowl. If you aren't very good at cracking eggs and you think you might get a shell in there, I highly suggest just crack them into a bowl on the side and then add them in. So I know I need two eggs, so I'm going to turn my mixer on to the lowest speed again. And I'm just going to crack my egg right into the side of the bowl here. I'm gonna crack my other egg right into the side of the bowl here. And I also know that I need one teaspoon of vanilla. You see that I'm not, this is a half a teaspoon, so I'm gonna do this twice. This isn't on super high speed because I don't wanna over mix my cookies. So I'm just going to mix this up until it is nice and incorporated. If you see that any of the dough is stuck to the sides of the bowl or anything like that, you can get it off and um, stop the mixer, but that looks good to me, okay? I don't need to go any further than that. Now what I need to do is I need to go back to that dry mixture, my flour, baking soda, and salt, and I'm gonna slowly incorporate that into my mixing bowl while it's on low speed. So you wanna put the bowl to the side of the mixer and using your rubber spatula, you're gonna slowly add in your flour. You don't wanna add it all in at once because that will make it clump up very, very much. So I'm slowly incorporating my flour into that 
butter, sugar, egg, and vanilla mixture. As you can see, it's not on super high. I'm just doing a little bit at a time. If you were to keep your mixer on high speed, you would break down that butter and that's how you get a very thin cookie that just spreads out on the cookie sheet. So I'm incorporating it a little bit more here on low. I'm just gonna get the last of that. And now what I'm going to do I'm gonna turn off my mixer. I'm gonna scrape down the sides. I'm gonna try and get off any flour that I see is on the top of my paddle here. And just give it a little bit more of a mix. Okay, that's it. That's all I need. Now what I'm going to add is the la last two ingredients to my chocolate chip cookies. And it is two cups of regular chocolate chips and my secret ingredient, which is one cup of Rice Krispies. This Rice Krispies is the secret because it gives it a little bit of a crunch um, and it's really excellent. You guys should try it out if you, if you have any extra Rice Krispies. I know it sounds strange, but it's delicious and me and my family have been doing it for years. So I'm gonna turn it on low again and I'm gonna add my chocolate chips, two cups. As my mixer is mixing, it's not on high. And then I'm gonna add my last cup there. Just give it a little. And that's it, no extra. That's all you want to mix, okay? And you see that dough, it looks great. Now just take your paddle off here. And I'm just going to get off all that cookie dough that is around the paddle. Alrighty. So this looks great. This is exactly what you want. You can see that it's not over mixed. It's not super soft. Um, it looks nice and chunky and great, but also too, all the flour and everything is incorporated. So over here, I'm going to show you real quick. I already have my pans prepared with uh, parchment paper. So these are prepared here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a portion scoop, which is this, to portion out my cookies. I'm not using my hands because I don't want the heat from my hands to break down the butter. So I'm gonna use a portion scoop. After I portion out all my cookies, I'm gonna place them right onto my prepared baking sheets here, and then I'm gonna put them in the oven. So you can see this. So I have my dough. I really pack it down in there, and then I'm just going to put them onto my pans. One thing that you need to remember is consistency, right? You want to use a portion scoop too so that all of your cookies are the same size. You don't wanna overcrowd your pan and put too many cookies on. You want to make sure that they are nice and spread out. So I would continue on here placing the cookies. I would probably only do about one, two, three, maybe four more on a pan and put them in the oven. After my cookies come out, I'm gonna put them on my cookie cooling rack right here. Uh, this circulates the um, air around the cookies, making them um, cool off a little bit better. When you know that your cookies are done in the oven, they're going to have a little bit of brown around the edges. Um, you can't see the bottom of the cookie, obviously, but if your whole cookie gets brown all the way around, it's overdone. So you wanna pull your cookies out when they're brown around the edges. Usually a recipe will give you a guideline of about eight to 12 minutes, depending on what the size of the portion scoop that you're using. So if you're using a smaller scoop, then the cookies are gonna take less time than if you're using 
using a larger scoop, right? Then the cookies would take a little bit more time. But eyeballing the cookies and seeing when they have that brown edge around them um, is when you wanna pull them out. They'll look a little bit puffy. You're gonna let them sit on your pan for just a few minutes for the cookies to kind of relax before you take your spatula and you place them onto your cookie cooling rack. This lets your cookies set up. If you take your cookies off of the hot pan right away, it's going to break them and damage them. So let them sit on the pan. You don't wanna let them sit too long because that carryover cook will continue to cook your cookies. Um, after you're done, then um, you'll just put more cookies in and you'll keep co uh, cooking your cookies until all of your uh, dough is all done. So um, I'm gonna put this recipe up. If you wanna follow my chocolate chip cookie recipe, you're more than welcome to. If not, and you wanna make some other cookie, um, go for it. Uh, there's tons of cookies out there that you can make. Um, if you wanna put some other ingredients in there, maybe nuts or some um, chocolate mints or something, candy canes, go for it. Um, so uh, I showed you my chocolate chip cookie recipe and uh, make sure that you follow along with the notes that that I gave you and I can't wait to see your cookies and what you come up with.